last time we've been discussing the superdense coding protocol. We recall that in this protocol Alice transfers true classical bits of information to Bob by making certain logical operations on her qubit from the belt pair and sending the qubit to Bob. Bob performs measurement of the qubit pair in the belt basis and obtains the values of classical bits that Alice wanted to send. In fact, Alice used the quantum information channel, which allows one to transfer on the qubits for transferring classical information. Here the question arises as to whether it is possible to implement the reverse situation, to use a classical channel for transferring the quantum information. In other words, how can Alice, by using the classical information channel, transfer the state of her qubit to Bob? At first glance, it looks like uh, Alice can physically transfer the state of her qubit to Bob correctly only using the quantum information channel. We recall that the qubit shouldn't be measured since otherwise the quantum reduction changes its state. However, in this lesson, we will learn that everything Alice needs for the state transfer is only a classical information channel and one qubit from a pair prepared in a bell state. Of course, Bob will have to with a second qubit. By the classical information channel, we mean any available way of classical information transfer between two addresses. It could be even a telephone line or an email. To make everything clear, we emphasize that we are now talking about three qubits. Alice has two of them and Bob have, has one. The quantum state Psi of the first her qubit uh, Alice wants to transfer to Bob. The second Alice's qubit and Bob's qubit are in a bell state. As before, although we could consider only the bell, uh, we could consider any bell state. But for the sake of being definite, we'll consider the bell state zero, beta zero zero. So our task now is to transfer an unknown, to transfer an unknown quantum state C of the first qubit to Bob using the entangled pair of qubits and the classical information channel. In order to perform the task, the protocol of quantum teleportation is being used. Within this way of information transfer, the quantum state of one physical system is being destroyed at the transmission point during the measurement and being recreated at the reception point on another physical system. So, Alice has to measure her psi qubit in a special way and then report the results to Bob. Then Bob can use the results to recreate the qubit state, uh, that is to bring the second qubit of the bell pair to the state C. The scheme of, for quantum teleportation of a qubit in unknown state C from Alice to Bob is presented on the slide. As we know, the state C can be represented by a superposition of basis states 0 and 1 with certain coefficients alpha and beta. In the beginning, the total state Psi0 of three qubits is the, is the standard products of the state Psi and the Bell state beta 0, 0. So, it's easy to show that at the beginning we have a superposition of the state uh, of the states alpha times 0, 0, 0 plus 0, 1, 1 and beta times 1, 0, 0 plus 1, 1, 1. And all of this is multiplied by a normalization factor 1 over square root of 2. To implement the teleportation protocol, Alice has to perform a measurement in the bell basis on her qubits. In order to do this, she should perform the CX transform, in which the C qubit acts as a control qubit and the first qubit of the bell pair acts as a controllable one. As a result of this transform, the state C0 which is, the, which is the state of the whole system of three qubits, changed to a state uh, C1, where the second qubits in all terms that are proportional to beta have, the sta have their states flipped. So now we have a superposition of states alpha times 0, 0, 0 plus 0, 1, 1, and beta times 0, oh, 1, 1, 0 plus 1, 0, 1. And again, all of this is multiplied by a normalization factor of 1 over square root of 2. The next step. Now Alice has to perform the Hadamard transform on her, on her first qubit, which is in the state Psi. 
since the, since the state P is the superposition of the states 0 and 1, the transform will result in the, in the zero state being, being turned in the, into the sum of states 0 and 1, and the state 1 being turned into their difference, as it is on the slide. To finish the measurement procedure, Alice performs measurement of every qubit in a computational basis. Let's consider the procedure of measurement in the Bell basis using a concrete example. Consider at first what is happening after a Hadamard transform in a general case. So, C2 equals 1 half alpha 0, 0, 0 plus alpha 0, 1, 1 plus alpha 1, 0, 0 plus alpha 1, 1, 1. And there, then, the terms proportional to beta go. Beta 0, 1, 0 plus beta 0, 0, 1 minus beta 1, 1, 0 and minus beta 1, 0, 1. Uh, we now combine the states of two first qubits in this way. We combine this and this, this and this, this and this, and this with this. And now we can simplify the, our, our expression. I have one half here, zero, zero here, the state alpha zero plus beta one here, the next term plus zero one and the state alpha one plus beta zero, the next term one zero, here this, it is the state alpha 0 minus beta 1 and the last term 1 1 and the state alpha 1 minus beta 0. So then Alice performs a measurement and one of these four terms can actuate. For example, if Alice obtains a state 1, 0, here 1 corresponds to i and 0 corresponds to g. Uh, after her measurement in the Bell basis, then Bob's qubit must be in this state. You see, 1, 0 is here, then Bob's receives this. So, for teleportation, Bob must apply the since uh, i equals 0 and g equals 1, Bob must apply the x to the 0 and z to the 1 transform, which is just z. Actually, he has just to do the phase change. And his state, alpha 0, minus beta 1, after the z-transform, will turn to a state alpha 0 plus beta 1. And this is the exact initial state, Psi. So, Bob has managed to restore the initial qubit state. So, as we have seen, in order to bring Bob's qubit into the state Psi, Alice has to perform measurements in the Bell basis on her pair of qubits and transfer these results to Bob. After that, depending on the results obtained by Alice, Bob has to perform a certain logical transform and his qubit will be in the state Psi. In conclusion, let's point out three following 
features of the quantum teleportation protocol. Firstly, the change of state goes instantly during the measurements. However, this still doesn't allow one to transfer information faster than light, since the data about measurement is transferred through the classical channel. Secondly, it's impossible to make a copy of a physical system in the same counter state because the qubit state is being destroyed at the sending point. And thirdly, one could use quantum teleportation to perform quantum logical operations. We will not consider this approach for the implementation of quantum computations in our course, but you can find the links to the literature on this topic in the lesson materials. Next time, we will find out how, the quantum, how can the quantum teleportation protocol be realized in, practical, in practice. That's all for now. Thank you for your attention.